Hello and welcome back to another video. So I thought today, a few of you said on my last inking video that you would love a tutorial and so I thought today we would focus on that. I have another commission to do and it's this lovely, lovely fluffy dog here. I've gone ahead and gridded this up as you can see. Um, but I thought we would focus on just a corner of the face with some of the fur and really focus on how I get some of that texture. So I will put up a picture of this dog zoomed into just the section that we're doing in this corner here you will see that that's what i'm focusing on in this video i won't show the whole thing today um but i'm going to talk through how i do some of the fur areas and then hopefully some of you can follow along and we can kind of work together and i'll show you how i do some bits so i'll put this screen the picture up i'll even um i'll figure out a way of posting the picture in the description below that you can access it and download it and you can follow along if you'd like, print that bit out and grid it up and see how you want to do that. So let's get started. Let's let's draw this out on the grid and then, you know, we can get on with the inking side of it. So like I said, I've already gridded this up. So I will scan this in and chop out just this corner here, just a quarter of this inking. Um, and I will allow you to print that out with the grid already on. And then if you draw a two by two centimeter grid with the same number of squares on a piece of paper, you will have the section of grid you will need to replicate. So all you need to do is look at each square and just copy what's in there. So for this square example, for example, is this one here for me. And I'm just roughly jotting out the spaces. So we have quite a large swooping curl here and um, that's about midway in that circle in that square so I'm going to just swoop that up there and then similarly I'm just looking at all the shapes and drawing those out so I can see where I need to ink so very very simple just look at the shapes look at the distance between the edges of the grid and kind of just map those out and it'll just make your inking much much easier so I'm going to go ahead and sketch the whole of this out. Um, you can pause the video here and sketch it out quickly. And then we will come back and start inking just this corner of the pet portrait. so we have the corner sketched out for this i'm going to use my botility glass dip pen but any fine liner probably smaller than a 0.1 so a 0.1 or a 0.05 fine liner would be great for this because you want as much detail as possible and um, so we're going to focus on the eyeball first like i mentioned in the last video it's my favorite place to start which for me on my sketch which it should be the same on yours if you followed the grid is here so as you can see on the reference photo, there are some very, very light, fine hairs over, over the top of that eyeball. But basically, we are going to start off by just lining the white fur to the right. So we're going to bring, we're going to bring some very thin, so go very light touch if you're using a fine liner. Um, and we're going to just bring that fur and just show that that is overlapping over the eye there. And then likewise on the other side we are going to do the same thing we're just going to kind of make it look like that's coming out the top of the eye there's like an, a swooping down piece of fur here that we're going to have coming down like this and then above it as you can see there's kind of like some fanning fur so we're going to add those lines in so just add in some nice fanning lines like this just kind of seeing where the shapes take you. So that's kind of the gist for outlining that eyeball. Now, like I mentioned, there are some very, very faint lines over the top and there's a bloom where the light is hitting the eyeball and is quite shiny just about here. So we're going to just line that up there, making sure not to encroach on the edge there. So just start to slowly fill in the black eye just underneath there, leaving that bloom just there for now. And then the fine, fine hairs, what I suggest is just take your liner and just do two little lines over the either side there. So you have a little white strip in between. Just do a couple of those where you see some more prominent hairs going over the, over the eye. Like this, and then I think I'm going to do of one here this is kind of at the point where it doesn't have to be super super accurate because 
you know we're just mimicking that there's some fur coming over the top so that's kind of how I'm going to do it, a couple like that. And then behind that, I want you to start to fill that eyeball in, but don't just scribble it and make it a nice, you know, a solid black patch. I suggest you do some cross hatching. So in each of these sections, just, uh, just kind of treat those as little areas that you'd like to fill in. So I'm going to just fill in this one and I'm just going to cross hatch it until it starts to darken up. And if you're using a dip pen, you may need to keep dipping. <clears throat> like this and I'm just going to cross hatch cross hatch until I filled that section up like that and then I'll move on to the next bit and cross hatch it again. So by cross hatching like this you're kind of not creating that really super super black area you are almost you're almost I don't know you're picking up the texture of the paper so on my paper it's handmade so it's not very it's not very smooth at all you might be working on a smooth piece of paper so this will allow you to add that texture and that and allow you to kind of not fill it in completely black and so those little bits of fur that you see overlapping the black eyeball will kind of shine through by doing this so you've left a few very distinct pieces and then underneath like with this one I'm going to kind of leave it like that so as you can see there's little patches of white showing through and that is how we're going to mimic kind of that very furry texture and then if you have left these patches and they're a bit too thick it kind of looks a bit silly you can just start to encroach on those and almost kind of cross hatch over them slightly and it will just fade those in and just make them look like really faint little thin pieces of fur over the top so that's the gist for this eyeball so i'm going to keep going like this and we're just going to finish off filling that eye in like that and then around that kind of like eye bloom just slowly encroach a little bit on that just to kind of make it blend into that dark section of the eye so there you go that's the eyeball done so you've got that really nice bloom the reflection you've got some really faint fur going over the top you have the edges where you've got fur overlapping the eye and all in all you've kind of got a really nice replication of a, an eyeball under a load of fur really so that's how you do this bit and then we will move on to doing the fur around so I've brought you in a little bit closer so again we have those kind of fanning bits and behind those fanning bits there's a little bit of darkness so we're just going to fill that in um, and blend it in so it kind of looks like it's coming over the eye a little bit and then just above here we have a shape so that shape is kind of curved like this and then we have kind of the fur going into the nose that you can see off this gridded area like that so you can see the shape here and there's kind of like a very white section almost like that and then behind it you've got some fur going in this direction like this so it's it's all about kind of going with that fur direction so behind here the fur is going like this the fur above it here is swooping down like this and it's all about following that fur direction so for here i'm going to slowly start to darken it because it's a bit darker than this bit here and we're just going to bring that down kind of move from the edges inwards and it kind of mimics this is the top of the fur and these bits are curling underneath another piece of fur and so it's just darkening the edges and making the middle kind of stand out a little bit and it's all about just adding smaller strokes it's adding up layers and just slowly building up the darks until you're happy with them and leaving the lights where you'd like them to be so that's there as you can see it looks like it's curving underneath this piece of fur and then for this piece of fur so it doesn't just look like a stark white section we're just going to add a couple of strands like that and maybe just from the bottom darken up underneath and there you have it that is a fur that's going over the top so really you're, you're wanting to just focus on the di the direction of the fur the edges that are going to be underneath another piece of fur so it looks like that's going underneath and it's being shadowed by the fur on top and just making sure that you're you're showing that direction of fur and it, it that is really all this is and especially with a fluffy dog like this you want to be you want to be layering and just making sure you're paying attention to that fur direction it's going to be vital to make this look like there's sections of fur upon fur 
So as we move, let's go up here. Let's focus a little bit more up here. So as you can see, there is kind of a section of fur that comes round like this and kind of has a few bits blooming at the top and like this. And I'm just looking at the fur direction, like I keep saying, like this. And then this fur comes over the top of it and circles round like that. So if you're focusing on this bit of fur, coming from the eye, you have kind of that hooded area that we started to create here. And then it kind of sweeps up like this. And this is a very white piece of fur. There is a section, if you look very closely, this actually comes over the top. This is underneath, this is on top. Um, and there's even a bit that comes down like that. So again, underneath, on top. So you know to leave this slightly less um, detailed, slightly less dark, and you know to shadow this slightly more. And then behind that, you shadow it even further. So it's all about getting the saturation and the hues in there. So you just need to start layering this up. So go with the direction of the fur, bring it round. Where that's connecting, there's gonna be a darker point because it's overlapping and you bring this down like this, so that's the direction. And then remember this is underneath, so you pull up from that bit of fur there to make it look like it's underneath, like that. And then that's the bit of fur underneath. And then you just bring this over the top and you start bringing this fur round like this. And remember this is very light, so you don't want too much, you don't want too much. You just wanna be showing that this is coming down like this. You know, make some smaller strokes to show that that's a bit, maybe a bit more dense there and it's a bit darker, and then longer strokes when you want to show some lighter areas. And then at the bottom here where it connects, you want to just darken that up and have it coming out of that fur like this because this is overlapping here. And that's, that's the gist of this. This is what we're going to be doing, is just building up those sections of fur. So let's do a little bit. I'm gonna speed up this footage so you can see a little bit more, and then we'll move on and see maybe a different section. So I'm going to continue with this top half here, and then we'll come back and maybe evaluate what we've done. So I've completed a little bit more and as you can see there are elements where I have definitely maybe embellished a curl or added a curl in just to create maybe a little bit more depth and a little bit more interest because there are sections where there's just a lot of a white piece of fur and although that can be absolutely fine and that's what the, the reference shows sometimes you want to add little bits just to make depth and just show that there's you know some clumped fur here underneath this big piece of fur and this goes underneath and then it travels underneath quite far and this is overlapping do you know what I mean and that's how you kind of build up these layers and these interesting points um so as we go further up and we start reaching the edges obviously on the reference photo you can see there's a lot of wispy fur so the way I tackle that is I tend to go with the direction so this piece here is curving around there then we've got a piece just curving around here so I've gone quite heavy with the shape when I sketched and made sure that I sketched out all that shape but in in reality that's not big one big piece of fur if I could get my words out um, and it's instead just a lot of wispy bits so the way you do that is just how you would expect you just do and you you just do little lines and gradually build up those wispy areas you know you've got a few bits coming along here then you do have a tiny bit of dense more dense fur here so you just fill that in and then you maybe just add a few little fine wisps coming off here. This is where a 0.05 fine liner would come in more handy if you don't have a dip pen. Um, and then you kind of just bring that bit down and fade it into the rest of the ink work. So you again just build these little sections up. We've got another little bit here coming around there and you fade it up. The, what you don't want to do is keep going in one direction. So can you see how I've done one, two, three pieces of line work there that are all go in the same direction now that's not it's not the best that's not going to be 
um, realistic because the fur goes in every direction so you want to add a bit more interest so you want to bring a piece of fur that comes across those and comes across there you obviously don't overdo it because then you're going to be darkening areas but just adding those little bits of interest and then darkening bits just help make that look a little bit more realistic and a little bit more like the reference photo so that's how you do a little edge of fur it'll obviously come together as you do all of these edges um, the one thing I will also say is go easier on your line work so here I've already darkened a few bits but say for this section here we've got a little bit of line work coming along here wispy bits then this kind of line work comes here and this little curl that we've got going on here extends over here maybe underneath maybe over the top you don't have to decide that right now bring that like that and then this bit of fur underneath is kind of a darker area so in the reference photo i think that's actually coming in this direction and going underneath here so we can do that but go lightly do those lines like this don't be too um, staccato don't do every line equally spaced just let your pen flow it's all about just creating that texture and that illusion to fur so as you can see I've gone quite light now you can leave it like that and do the whole portrait like that then come back to it or in your section you can come back to it here now I know this piece of fur is laying on top so I can then start adding depth so I'll start darkening this corner here and this edge that this fur is overlapping over because naturally that would have created a shadow on this piece of fur likewise with this piece up here that will have created a shadow over that section there so you just slowly start building that up and as you can see we've already created that nice bit of depth underneath those other two pieces of fur so that's what i suggest is start building up i've noticed that this piece is overlapping this piece but it's still the same hue and saturation of ink so we just slowly add a little bit of depth there and voila we've pushed that back so i really recommend working lighter rather than darker and you can always come back and darken this section so i'm going to work on this top section here and get some of these edges done and you can see kind of how i'm starting to build that up so that is that little patch there done as you can see i've really highlighted a few clumps of fur to really make sure that you can see that that piece of fur and this piece of fur is above all the rest and you've got some really interlacing techniques and diagonal areas and and you know overlapping pieces of fur and it really does make that illusion of thick fur with lots of curls so that's basically how we've managed to achieve that and as you can see here i can already spot that this is very one level there there's no really wispy bits so we're just going to take if you've got a dip pen 
do this with whatever's left if you've been talking or something and your ink's a little bit drier you should have less on there and it'll allow you to do wispies or use a 0.05 fine liner and really press press very very lightly um, and that'll help you get really really faint little wispy lines there and as you can see I've already broken that up and it already looks way more natural and way more wispy like fur would be so just make sure you're working with a very very light hand on those areas you will soon pick that up even if this for this first try you over dark and you will soon start to realize the pressure you need to put on and um and, and just learn the technique it, it, you know I didn't learn all this in a day I've been doing this for many many years now and um, it's taken me a long time to develop my technique in the last inking video I found a new technique on doing noses and I think that's how I'm always going to do a nose from now on so you know I'm still learning and it's still a learning process I'm just showing you what I have picked up and the things I think about as I ink. So if we move down to this nose fur, so in the reference photo, the nose here has a big clump of fur going in this direction and this piece is coming in this direction. Now, I want to do that, but there's some, this is the corner of the nose and this is why I only did a quarter so that you could see kind of, if you could break it up, it's just way easier to do it that way. So this corner of the nose is very dark. Then we have some fur kind of overlapping it and then some fur wisps that's come round and then you've got the fur underneath. So the way I tackle that is I do all the wispy fur first because it's going to have to be left kind of um, outlined and a bit more light and white. So this is the corner of the nose and there's actually this nice little white piece of fur just going over the corner like that. So I'm just going to leave two little lines like that. Then we have a long wispy piece of fur that kind of comes up like this and it's very very curly so we're just going to leave that it's not going to look as stark white once we've done but we're just we're just outlining it to make sure that we know it's there then there's a nice long piece of curly fur just coming along here so we're going to just do that too like that and then we start to work backwards so the bit in front is actually some little wispy bits like this so they kind of come off the nose in a nice little tight curl so we're just going to pop those in we're not going to make them too dark at the moment um we'll come back to those so that's that that's first layer and then the next layer is much longer fur so then we elongate our strokes of the pen so we bring longer lines like this and we we literally build those up so as you can see with this top section there's actually like almost layers or sh thicker strands of fur so i'm just going to break those up like that and bring these round i'm just keeping my pen quite faint so again press a lot lighter if that's what you're doing and then it's almost like the in-between chunks are darker and then there's lighter chunks in between those so if we dip your pen if you're using a dip pen or you know press a little bit harder Oops, sorry my cat is about to knock over my ink pot which would be a disaster so let's wait for a second oh knocking everything okay so we're going to just darken those in between layers so we've got a layer here so we're going to darken that one leave that one light we're going to darken this one again long strokes long strokes and we're just going to alternate like that obviously you're not going to make it super perfect because it's 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 organic it's not you know man-made so everything is going to be a little bit less perfect like that so we're going to start off like that just really darkening those little bits elongate underneath that strand make sure you're going in the same direction like that and then that's your layering so then all we need to do is just kind of fade this into this area so we're going to lightly pull back we're going to make sure this is kind of meeting it a bit more because we stopped a little short so we, we didn't clash with the area we wanted to leave white so just bring those bits in and then just keep running your pen in those long long lines and as you see we've created kind of this long fur that's coming from the nose and that's that so we're going to do the same here and then we'll come back and we'll start doing these much more clumpier bits of fur there
right so next we have this over overhanging hood bit of fur here around the eye so same as before just make sure you're picking up the direction of the fur so we've got quite a lot of it's kind of coming like this and then we've got the bits underneath kind of coming away from the eye like that so again just pick the direction of the fur you want to do kind of do those bits again apply lightly you can always darken later and then change direction when we do the hooded area and that just comes over the top like that and it is it is as simple as that and I know sometimes people may be like it looks way more simple that, than I'm doing, but don't forget, I've had a lot of practice. It kind of comes quite naturally. But if you practice this tutorial and, and do this inking with me, apologies, there's a lot of motorbikes going on outside for some reason. <laughs> if you practice this inking with me and then try maybe your own pet or a family friend's pet or something like that and just try the technique and separate the whole dog or cat or whatever animal you're doing. You don't have to do the whole animal, just a little bit of it. Um, and it will slowly get there. So with this eye, we just want to extend that darkness because it is kind of encroaching into that fur a little bit. We don't want it to look like it's got kind of like this miniature eye. So we extend the darkness like this. And then this is what I'm talking about, about darkening things later. So now we've darkened all the bit around it like that. Then I'm actually going to load my pen back up. And then I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to darken that eye again. Just make, just add a little bit more ink, resaturate all of this. Just really make sure that you can see that that's darkness. So with the darkness, you can pull into this bit that you've just done of the nose and kind of run into it like that. And that will kind of make it look like that fur is coming over the eyeball like that. So make sure to not overdo overdo it over some of your strands. And yes, we have lost a little bit of that bloom. So sometimes that happens. Sometimes I've over inked something or I've potentially gone over something I didn't want to go over. I wanted to leave it white. And sometimes all I need to do is just get a, a craft knife and I just scrape away the top layer of my paper. Now I know I can do that with my paper. You may not be able to do it with yours. So maybe practice on a, on a scrap piece of paper first but I'm just going to lift that off but try to keep the white where you can I've just accidentally gone over that as I was talking <laughs> um but there you have it so now you've created that depth in the eyeball there um and basically the rest of this is just going to be the same technique as we've applied here and all over really it's pick your direction of your fur clump up areas and shade areas where fur is going over over other fur and then we'll catch up at the end just for our final thoughts
right, so I finished that quarter there. I think the main things to kind of take away from this for the for the time being is that when you're doing a portrait, kind of look at the key parts of the reference photo for that kind of part you're working on. So for here, there's a curl, distinct curl coming up here, here, and a little curl coming over there. So I've got those main three curls going there. And then everything else, you just kind of interpolate and make sure kind of goes in the same direction. You can add some extra curls in there and add a bit of depth and darker areas. And it just helps to soften. It helps to bring depth to the fur. And that's all you can really do with these sort of things. It's, it's just kind of adapting and making sure that there is some depth there i think if it's looking flat you need to be pushing things back with a bit more darkness behind lighter areas um but like i say i've i've made a lot of these curls up just to kind of um fill some space because especially with a photo that's not the clearest like this one i think um it can be very difficult if you're not um if you're not able to see all the fur and sometimes it's really it's really hard to actually just stick to all the same fur lines especially with a curly dog like this so there is an element of interpolating an artistic license there um but i hope that was really really helpful i hope that you've enjoyed seeing that i have gone ahead and i have finished the rest of the dog so you can see there um but i've i've really enjoyed kind of talking through a bit more of my process and I hope you've enjoyed learning and I hope if you have followed along um please tag me on your socials I'd love to see if you know what you've managed to do with this tutorial and where you've taken it um but if you'd like to see more tutorials or on different parts of the pet so the nose the mouth you know other areas please let me know some short dog hairs I can do all of those things so just let me know in the comments below if you've enjoyed and if you would like some more tutorials soon so I can do those so thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video